Welcome to ProjectCAD Basics for Beginners. This is Creating and Modifying Layouts. To find links to any downloadable resources available for this video, make sure to check the description box below. For this video lesson, I'll be using the supplied sample drawing named AEC Plan Project Sample. I'll open it now. Also, for this video, I've changed the workspace to Ribbon Full. ProjectCAD has two distinct spaces for your drafting work. One is Model Space and has been our focus so far in this video series. This is where you create your drawings always at full scale. Unless customized, its background will be black. It will display in the layout tabs at the bottom of the editor as the Model tab. This tab will always be the first one on the left and cannot be renamed or deleted. To the right of Model Space are the Layout tabs. When you enter one of these, by default, you will be in the second drafting space called Paper Space. You can have however many you need and name them according to your needs. Right-click on the Layout tab to access a pop-up menu that has the tool to rename it. You can also delete a layout, copy it, or create a new one. I'll click the layout named Work to enter it. As you see, its background by default is white. A layout is intended to represent your printed or plotted drawing. It will be set to the size of your drawing, in this case an A1 size, and it typically contains your title block. Viewports are then created that look back at model space. Right now, the viewports themselves are hidden as they have been inserted onto a special layer that does not print and is currently frozen. I'll thaw it now so that you can see the viewports in this layout. A viewport can be activated by simply double clicking within it. When active, it works exactly like your model space tab. In fact, you'll see the UCS icon change and the viewport tools and nav cube are also visible. To deactivate the viewport and return to paper space, just double click outside of the active viewport anywhere there is no other viewport. In our case, that's just below the active one. Notice that the UCS icon returns to its paper space configuration. To learn how to create and work with viewports, I'm going to create a new layout and work in it. You can either right click on a layout and choose new layout or click on the little plus icon to the left of the model tab. A new viewport will appear to the right of the work tab. I'll click on it to go there now. Right away, you'll see our model appear. It is being viewed through a default viewport that is made with any new layout. In our case, we want to create our own, so I'll erase the one it created for us. Now we have a blank layout. I'll switch to the Layout tab of the ribbon to access my tools. Again, since viewports are entities like any other ProjectCAD entity, they will be plotted. Most of the time you don't want to see your viewports on your output, so we want to place them onto a non-plotting layer. Many firms have a dedicated layer for them, but in this sample drawing, the special layer called Def Points was used, so I'll use it again here. Calling up the layer palette, I'll set it to be current. I'll expand the viewport icon to find my tools. You can create a two, three, or four viewport setup as we see in the expanded tooltip, or as we want, a single free-floating one. I'll click on one viewport. From here, it's as easy as creating a rectangle. I'll click for a corner and an opposite corner. The viewport is created and an extensive view of our model space is displayed. I'll activate my viewport to show that you can zoom and pan within it just like in model space. We'll be using the whole plan, but you may be interested in a single room or area. Before we scale our view, it's a good idea to center up what you want to see. Again, we want everything, so I'll do a zoom extents. The next step is to scale the viewport to best fit our sheet size. First, we must activate our viewport by double clicking within it. Then, from the newly appeared annotation scale list in the status bar, click it to reveal a list of available scales. For this particular layout, I'll click on 3 seconds of an inch equals one foot. You'll see your layout view adjust to that scale. Return to paper space by double clicking outside of the viewport when you're done. We have one more step in our viewport workflow. Remember when I mentioned that you can zoom and pan within an active viewport? Ours is now currently set correctly, so we want to lock it into place to prevent accidental zooms or pans. 
ProjectAd offers a handy visual aid to know whether a viewport is locked or not. An active viewport that is not locked will appear with a bold black outline. A locked one will be a bold red outline. Ours is black, so we know it's not locked. Locking a viewport is easy, and it can be done a few ways. First, the viewport can either be currently active, or you can just select it from paper space. When you do either, you can click the lock, unlock icon in the status bar. When you do, the icon shackle goes from unlocked to locked. Since I have the viewport activated, you'll also see it turn red. Instead of the status bar icon, we could have also used the tools found in the viewports panel of the ribbon. Since we just locked it, let's unlock it from there. The last method you can use is to select the viewport edge from paper space and right click to bring up the contextual menu. From the display locked entry, expand it and select yes. I'll reactivate the locked viewport now and attempt to zoom and pan. Notice that even though we're in an active model space view, Zooming and panning works just like it would in paper space. You can find out more information, download their 30-day free trial, or purchase your own ProjectCAD license at www.projectcad.com.